Hello, welcome back to part 9 of A Legionary's Life. So we are uh, moving on our way to uh, Macedonia. And uh, I believe that this is like the final part of the game. I don't know how many, how many parts there is left, but this is the final uh, war or region we fight in uh, so far in the game. It's set to be full release though here in just a couple days. This comes out, this video will be out on the, uh, the 23rd. Game is supposed to be full release 25th, so we're almost there. And also good news for some of you. Uh, I have I have done some some looking up and learning on my pronunciations, so hopefully I will say things uh, not like someone who doesn't know what they're talking about, and someone who uh, maybe does pretend to know what they're talking about. So uh, right now we are in Macedonia. We're going to do and just go and just uh, uh, make ourselves a little better, I suppose, before we go in there too far. But our marching column is walking past an upturned cart. There are only women and children about, refugees. None of them look injured, but they can't flip the vehicle. Everyone keeps marching as if they didn't even exist. Well, you know what? Bobacus Rossius, he's the kind of guy that helps out refugees. The women eye you warily at first, but relax when they see you just want to help. When the cart is back on its wheels, they thank you for unexpected aid. Children wave at you as you resume your place in the column, and they set off in the opposite direction. Well, you're welcome, kids. You guys are used to seeing the poor and the weak. Take the greatest burden of any war that you feel almost relieved when you can prove to yourself that there is still some humanity left in you. Yeah, that's right, that's right. That's Bobacus Rossius to you guys. Again, crossing an irregular stony trail. Suddenly you notice something that freezes you in your tracks. There's a viper right next to your left foot. Its flat, triangular head is staring at you. Oh, no, that, no, no, don't uh, step away carefully. Attack it with your sword. If it bites us, are we going to die? Surely, we, this isn't going to be like a two-minute episode, is it? Step away very carefully. You start to slowly retrace your steps. After a minute, the viper slithers away out of sight. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I thought I was done. <laughs> I thought I was done for there. Um, okay. Um, let's take a, take a quick breather here. Play some dice. And more dice. More more things? Oh, okay. It's forage time. All right. Where are we going to head to? So we've got house up there. A couple up that way. Oh, why can't they just like put me closer to the towns? It would be a lot easier, wouldn't it? I have to talk with my uh, my legionary here. My my, what's his face? Probably shouldn't go out the mountains though. I'm still kind of curious what happens if we if we don't go back. I'm assuming it has something to do with um, the uh, my uh, what's his face probably won't like me as much. Uh, we were bad at catching fish. Let's go rob a town and head up this way. And right over here, go hunting. Sure. Impressive display of skills seems to motivate the rest of your squad. Yeah, yeah. Lots and lots of food. Excellent. Um, it needs to be some variety, I think, here in the forge, if you ask me. Um, you know. Let's go this way and collect from that town. We got enough stuff. All right, forget that town over there and head on back. I suppose we should we should avoid trees as much as possible because there's ambush risk of zero here. Uh, even zero in the mountains. It just takes longer to move. If I was a bandit, I'd hang out in the mountains. Let's go down this way, though. So anyway, since we are, I think, pretty close to the end of the game, we're going to just, I'm going to finish it out. We'll, uh, we'll do a couple more, well, probably not one video here, but maybe a couple more videos. We'll, uh, we'll see how long it takes, but we'll press on through and see if we can hit the end. Hopefully Bob will survive and make it all the way to the end here. We'll see. So uh, anyway, back to uh, doing some, I think we need some training. Let's go some with some, some sparring with the best. You're well liked enough to have a high chance of success. Yeah, we got to keep doing this. Uh, more things happening. There are Thracian auxiliaries in Philip's army, but the uh, party in front of you is not exactly ordinary. Heavy armored warrior who leads the group is a huge, seven and a half feet monster towering above his compatriots. You've heard of him. They call him the Bulwark. Truth be told, before seeing him with your own eyes, you didn't even believe that a human being could be could, that big could exist. Brandishing an outlandish iron-headed mace, an alarming skill. That thing must be heavy, but he makes it look like a stick. Keep shouting something to your party that bears all the hallmarks of a challenge. He moves with surprising dexterity for his bulk. There in the open, his mace would give him a further advantage over your sword. I could a du duel him to the death. No freaking way. <laughs> Gaius Curtius Rufus is stepping forth to accept the challenge. Gaius is kind of stupid. Uh, he's one of the most experienced legionaries in your group, but you doubt that he would stand a chance. Um, Gaius is kind of stupid. Gaius, go get him. It's a brief duel. You cringe at the sickening noise when the giant <laughs> smashes Rufus's helmet <laughs> with a powerful swing. My morale is drinking. Oh, I feel sad. Avenge? No, 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 no. Rufus? The Colossus laughs when nobody else answers his provocation. You slowly retreat, keeping a tight formation. The Thracians didn't seem interested in giving chase. All right, all right, all right. Um, yeah, yeah. Sword and shield, shield skill. I think we should just we should just go all on on this. Sword and shield. I want to be I want to be good at this kind of stuff. 
Um, how are we? Let's take a look real quick. It's been a while since I checked this stuff out, so let's see how we are feeling here. Um, 67 seems all right. Shields at 62. Javelin we don't really do much with. I probably could train a bit of that, actually. That might be nice. People keep telling me in comments to use my Javelin. Get it thrown in there and get some damage quick off, you know, uh, uh, quickly. And, and uh, start with your enemies already. Damage is a good thing. Um, so maybe we should do that. Coordination is excellent. Endurance is, is decent. Um, Constitution 70. I mean, I think I think we're looking good. I don't know. Um, let's do a little bit of javelin skills, and then we'll uh, and then we'll hang out for a bit here. Play some board games. I'm always up for some board games. What do you suppose we play in the Roman times? Seven Wonders. I got a little bit of cash. Maybe we should spend the cash for our final days. My morale is ecstatic. Um, how much do I have? I have a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks and a chainmail thing that covers me pretty well. Um, maybe I can find myself a nice sword. I don't remember what I got here. Level 3, level 4 sword. This is a, uh, an inscribed gladius. 4 to 15 damage. Remember that. Let's see what we can find here. Okay, time is over, so we can only buy one thing. Ooh, an attic helmet. That seems okay. Reinforced linen cuirass. Um, what does this do for us? Maybe. It'd be nice to have my head a little bit better coverage. Um... I, the one I bought is pretty expensive, I think. So I think that's about the same. Um, I kind of want to save up my cash for something really good. You know, my, my head's important and all that, but um, let's compare. So it's uh, the one I have is better cover on my head, less on the neck. Damage protection, it's a little better, but not much. A little bit better material, it probably won't break as easily. You know what? Forget it. We're moving on. Crossing the lands of the uh, Dasaretai. Sorry, I didn't look that one up. <laughs> Your army has reached the Macedonian border. Before winter, Philip laid waste to the area surrounding Athens. But now you are the biggest threat to his fighting force, and you know he has diverted his efforts to stop you. For some time, both armies ignore each other's position. When the Macedonians ultimately make contact, they set camp a, a mere thousand paces from yours. Led personally by their king, they are about as numerous as you, perhaps above 20,000. After two uneventful days, the consul leads you out to offer battle. For the first time ever, your army is fielding war elephants. You have not sided yet. If you trust the beasts, they can be devastating at times, and horses are afraid of them, but they are known to turn against their own when the army, in, when they panic. This is not a thought. You should dwell on at this time. You may no longer be the young boy who ten years ago looked at the walls of New Carthage with apprehension, uh, but the thought of facing the legendary Macedonian phalanx doesn't uh, make you feel at ease. However, it soon becomes apparent that you won't be fighting anyone today. Philip is blatantly refusing battle and sends forth a small host of cavalry and light infantry Galba answers with a similarly, similarly composed force, but the ensuing skirmish comes to nothing. And two days later, another skirmish leaves no mark. And the consul leads you out. On the morrow, Philip declines once again. Time is passing, and everyone is aware that the Macedonian supply line is much shorter than yours. Galba can't send you to forage with the enemy so close by. It doesn't come as a surprise when he gives the orders for you to move your camp several miles away, near a place they call the Autolibus. From the safety of your new camp, forage parties are sent further and further away to harvest wheat from the surrounding fields. It looks like a fine day when you set off to the distant area. Everything seems to go smoothly as you spend hours harvesting the precious crop. It comes as a shock when one of the soldiers raises a cry of alarm. A large cavalry squadron is approaching and they are not friends. It wouldn't take long, too long before they get here. You're in charge and must think quickly. You might seek refuge uh, in a small forest to the northwest. If you are not too slow, you should be able to reach it in time before you are swept up. Or you might convince your men to suppress, suppress, suppress panic. Close ranks, move orderly towards the trees, trying to keep the enemy at bay. No, 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 let's just run. Exertion and the approaching noise of the enemy cavalry make you feel like you're about to collapse, but you reach the forest before they can catch you. You press on through the trees, the cavalrymen wouldn't dare follow you here. Many of your men are still with you, but quite a few are missing. They didn't make it. Oh, sorry, sorry, men. Keep moving for about a half an hour. You're still safe from the cavalry, but there uh, might be others lurking in the place like this. You hear noises of battle coming from not far away. All eyes turn to you. This might lead to another ambush when you may not be able to escape. On the other hand, someone may be in need of help. Um, hmm. No, our orders are just to forage, not battle. Keep away. As you move away, sounds slowly die down. Nobody says a word. From a hilltop, you can see a large tract of land. The most direct route from your camp goes through the plain in front of you, but the presence of an enemy cavalry squadron dissuades you from going down this road. There are two alternatives. Wooded, ragged ground to your left, a marshland to your right. Both offer good cover, so it appears. Um, I think we go for the woods. Marsh doesn't sound like a thing to go through. 
Crossing is difficult. At one point, the raucous and swearing behind your soldiers, uh, your shoulders tells you that something serious happened. Marcellus, one of the soldiers, fell off an escar in, uh, escarpment, landed on the ground six paces below, and seems to be seriously injured. No, Marcellus. No way for him to come back from there, and there's no easy way in, unless you want to abandon him to his fate. Someone must climb down and help him find his way to the campsite. Um. Um. Okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll be a hero today, okay? I've been not a hero for a long time. Aquili Aquilius and Quin Quirinius are ready to follow you. Cautiously, you begin the tricky descent. It's a demanding task, but you reach the bottom safely. Marcellus's sword arm is broken, and he limps heavily as he walks. When Aquilius and Qu uh, Quirinius reach you, they say goodbye to your brothers in arms and set off on your own. You've been walking for a while, ears up for any suspicious sound. In a shocking, horrifying moment, you see both Aquilus and Quirinius collapse, each with a javelin stuck through their body. Thoughts uh, and instinct overlap in your mind. Whoever did this possesses great skill and training. Um, um, but Marcellus can't run. We won't leave him to die. Yeah, we will run in. You hear Marcellus curse behind you. His sound suddenly stops as you keep running until your lungs are about to burst. <laughs> We're kind of a coward. Uh, you feel dejected, but what else could you be done? That's right, what else, Marcellus? You eventually leave the hills and finally come in sight of your camp. You manage to rejoin your group before reaching the fortifications and have to explain what, that you were the only survivor of a dis disastrous ambush. Yeah. <laughs> Morale's still high, though. We're good. You find confusion when you arrive at the camp. Small parties of survivors like yours are coming with alarming news of what is happening outside. The consul sends out his cavalry to, to rescue the beleaguered foragers and leads the heavy infantry into support. After your ordeal, you are left behind the garrison to, the, uh, to garrison the base. The army comes back at the end of the day. Macedonians have been re uh, repulsed and forced back to the camp. There's even a soldier who boasts of having killed Philip's horse, almost getting the king himself. You find that hard to believe. An armistice is declared to bury the dead on both sides. The night is silent and peaceful, but when the morning comes, you are baffled to find out that Philip and his army have left. Let's go bury Marcellus. For the moment, Galva does not seem inclined to give chase. Oh, we're back again. Okay, that was a nice uh, peaceful... Well, I say peaceful. That was a... Um, Nice cowardly uh, uh, part, we should say. Okay, um, we do have cash. We could spend that cash. Let's let's spend the cash at the end of this of this phase. Uh, let me spend my time doing some. Let's do some javelin practice. We can probably get that up pretty quickly. That's three in a row, four in a row, five in a row. There we go. Philip comes very close to catching your army unprepared near Pluina, and you're forced to retreat. Soon after, you attempt to march into the Upper Macedonian region of Aordia. Uh, a narrow pass is the only way in. Macedonian king must have anticipated the council's move. Uh, your scouts report that the pass has been fortified. It changes nothing. Galba resolves to force his way through. If nothing else, the ground is too difficult, too difficult for the enemy to employ the phalanx. You are kept in reserve this time. You observe the advance uh, of some maniples from an elevated vantage point. Uh, Cretan archers are pestering them with arrows, but they know what to expect and march tidily under the protection of their large shields. When they get closer, the advance comes to a halt. It seems the defenders are throwing stones at them. The damage must be negligible, but the noise is certainly frightening many of the men. It takes a while for the officers to regroup and the uh, maniples and resume, maniples and resume the, uh, the uh, advance. They finally reach the ramparts and begin to put some pressure on the Macedonians. At the same time, you see other units attack a not-too-far hilltop. A short and brutal clash ensues. The enemy is ousted, and your fellow legionaries have gained the convenient access to the rear of the Macedonian line. When they reach the back of the ramparts, the battle becomes a one-sided bloodbath. You gain access to a Aordia, uh, Aordea, uh, but, we, but the pass was defended by a relatively small number of troops. Where's the rest of Philip's army? Excellent question. Um, let's do a bit of, uh, of, of relaxing. You know what? We've had a rough, stressful, uh, cowardly day, and um, we need to just hang around for a bit, I think. Okay, now let's do some more javelin. Where, how's our javelin at? What are we doing here? Uh, 56. Let's get it up to at least 60. Four more javelins. Yep. Even with much of the enemy uh, out of the way, there, um, there are strong rumors about troubles in the north of their country. Everybody knows uh, you won't be pushing deep into Macedonia. Your supply lines are already as, uh, as stretched as they can get. Doesn't matter. You have the region of Aordea A A A A at your mercy, and that will be soon enough for the moment. That will be enough for the moment. Several towns fall with hardly any resistance, heavy with plunder and leaving a trail of destruction behind you. You move back into the territory of... Deserate, there, uh, the council chooses the city of Pelion as a future base for your operations against Macedonia. Its inhabitants don't share this view. You will capture Pelion by force. Today, you'll storm the city walls. Wherever you look, men are at work building ladders, getting the right length, 
can be a difficult task. Um, no, no. I, I did this before, but it's not really my, my, my place, you know? Ladders are ready. Attack is drawing near. You advance toward the city. The assault begins. Defenders do what they can to thwart your action as the ladders are propped up against the walls. Their length may not be perfect, but they will do. First man over the wall will receive a mural crown, one of the most highly regarded awards in the army. You're not in charge of the maniple, but um, we can do it. Um, you know what? We never really got anywhere by... Um, um, oh, we can do that, or maybe decide to help the centurion. Be, um, not in charge of this maniple. Making it on your own will be even more difficult. Or, of course, you may decide to help your centurion. You can be sure he will be generous should he succeed. Uh, no, you know what? We didn't get this far in life by 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 being a hero, right? Well, we're doing our job. Careful approach spares you the worst. While you were still climbing, the opposite opposition on the ramparts is slowly but steadily crushed. Your ram compatriots are over uh, here, overcome the city's defenses. Not long afterwards, you are walking along the streets of Pelion. Your orders are the same as usual in this kind of situation: kill anything you meet, be it people or animals. On your right, there is a beautiful small temple with a go to the goddess Ceres, whom the locals call Demeter. You see a lone man in the street. The moment he sees you, he is frozen with terror. He is unarmed and looks too old and too scrawny to fight anyway. Hardly a threat. A couple legionaries promptly move towards him. Swords at the ready. You are in command of this group. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Um, I mean, we've murdered, like, thousands and thousands of people. What's one old man going to do? At least the poor guy is dealt with mercifully, mercifully swiftly. Doesn't make you feel any more pleasant. Yeah, I feel a little bad about that. After a while, the sound of trumpets announces that Pelion has been secured, the slaughter is over, and the pillage begins. The situation is settled down. The rewards for the fights at the wall are assigned. I'm just trying to get my uh, more. Philip had to deal with an invasion by the uh, Dardanians from the north. The attackers are retreating now, hard-pressed by the Macedonian army. After garrisoning the freshly conquered city of Pelion, Galba turns westward to your original starting point before winter comes. The rich loot of your raid in Upper Macedonia and Desaratia is shared among the troops. Part of it has been set aside and is going to be kept up for grabs in a series of games to be held. We can expect the cream of the crop of the army to complete, compete. Each winner, a winner, winner will receive a thousand denarii. Um, is it? Yeah, they are also 250 denarii for runners up and 100. For, yeah. The three lap foot race, the javelin contest, or the javelin contest. Um, we'll run. Most of the best runners in the army uh, participate in the race, including Spurius Aquidius uh, of Valis, uh, well known for his superb athletic prowess. He starts the first three laps around the track. Uh, no, no, no. Steady, steady. Uh, you're way too slow. <laughs> you're losing ground. You're currently among the last. Lap done. Two more to go. Sprint. Decided to spend your best energies in this lap. Oh, we're doing terrible. Way too slow. Currently among the last. One more to go. You were showing the strain after sprinting. The next step will be harder. Um, keep a steady pace. Your weight. Oh, I'm so slow. Finish last. Unable to keep up with even the tail group. Oh, I'm embarrassed. New Consul Publius Vilius Tapulus brings reinforcements from Italia to charge. Galba's term of office is over. 2,000 veterans from the African campaign are mutinying. Uh, for one thing, they claim that they have never volunteered for this war, but were forced to embark by the tribunes of the former consul. Uh, for another, they have severed, uh, served long enough and have the right to go back to their families. Um, you know, I'm a little sympathetic about that, yeah. You can't turn your back on the brothers in arms who have shared hardships in the Africa campaign with you. Uh, they have every right to make their demands after all, and they have been given, they have given to the Republic. Yeah, yeah. Situation is resolved when the new consul, uh, Tapolis, agrees to write to the Senate about the veterans' requests, providing the mutiny is called off immediately. Okay, let's take a, take a, a breather here. Okay, there's more pay. 50 bucks. Um, wish I could have 300 bucks, you know, and uh, or 1,000 bucks if I ran that race. Suddenly wake up. It's night and you are inside your quarters. It takes you a few seconds to become aware of the situation. There's a shadow moving slowly close to you, carefully going through your belongings. A thief! Last time we called for help, this time we're getting them. We're getting them. You take them by the surprise and grab hold of him. The noise wakes up your comrades and he's soon pinned down. His face looks vaguely familiar. A soldier from another maniple. Recover your money and hand him over to the guards. Your morale is increased by two. I thought I was going to be able to strike him down. I'm going to take out all my cowardly aggressions. Uh, let's go for more of this. With the arrival of spring and the news of Philip's presence in nearby uh, Epirus, uh, Tapolis is eager to leave winter quarters and move towards the enemy. 
You're camped after a long day's march when something completely unexpected happens. The new consul is here, ready to take command and send Tapolis back to Rome. He must have left Italia much sooner than customary and hurried by forced marches since then. It's very young for a consul about your age, but Titus uh, Quintius Flaminius looks like a very driven man. A few days later, his reinforcements join you. Flaminius has brought over 3,000 men, many of them veterans who served in Hispania or Africa. And the boy, forge time. This is just like talking day. Story time. Okay, we're going to go to the right here. Hope everyone's okay with story time. It's fish. Oh, nope, we're a bad fisherman today. There's some good stuff in here. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, let's get some fish. Nope, bad fish. Okay. Grab some more of that. Man, we can't fish anything today. Ooh, lots of good stuff in there. Oh, oh, there's just, just stuff just lying around? I wonder if it's been like that the whole time. I bet it has been. Who needs, who needs to go to town? We can just collect stuff up here. We're running out of time. Let's go stock up on this town here. We're almost there. There we go. If I made supplies here, you expect a lot more. This is certainly suspicious. Let's look harder. Yep, there we are. Okay, oh, we're still not there. Okay, another town up here, though. There we go. Okay, back to camp. If we can get there quickly. I spent too much time searching. I think we spent too much time. Uh oh Collected plenty of supplies, but you were behind schedule. Superior is not particularly happy about this. Neither are the soldiers who were entrusted to you. Eh, man, well, you know what? Get over it. Um, all right. All right. Um, let's buy some things. Let's buy some things. Give me something good. We got 1400 bucks. Got some nice chain mail there. I think it's about what we have, though. Um, nothing really here. Um, let's search again. Oh, hang on. There's a discussion between your comrades. Titus Modius uh, maintains that the world is round. Notion that he must have heard somewhere in his in this land. Most of the rest believe it's a weird concept. I'll have my say. Yeah, yeah. Don't be dumb. Just have to show your opinion. Majority of the world is flat. So, so. Um, that's not true. Nobody thought the world was flat. Especially back then. They knew the world was round, by the way. Um, agree with Modius the world is round. Yeah. Try to defend Modius' views, but fail to produce a strong argument in his favor. Most of your comrades keep missing your eccentric theories. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think whenever, when did, um, what's his face? I don't know. Um, let's go with, uh, do we do one more search? One more search. Okay, time's out. Can we get something good in here? No, not really. Nothing good at all. All right, let's move on. Over here, two tribunes discussing the, uh, the present situation. The youngest of the pair insists that it would be better to take the long route through Desiratia. Uh, Desiratia? Bypass the enemy entirely and invade Macedonia from there. Uh, his colleague replies that such a move would leave Philip's army between you and your base on the coast. Not the brightest maneuver he has ever seen. It would, be, uh, it would also solve nothing. If you want to obtain a decisive advantage, you have to face the Macedonians now. The consul Flaminius must have thought the same, because you are marched to the river Aeus, where the, river, where the enemy is waiting for you. Make camp and prepare for the inevitable. In many years of campaigning under your belt, you're still not completely used to this. Regardless, you don't let any nervousness show on the outside. Are we fighting finally? I'm ready to fight. The troop loves me. Look at that. Enemy's position is very solid and difficult to attack. It's no surprise when the consul accepts the summit with Philip to discuss peace terms. No, no, no peace. I want to kill him. Uh, he needs this. He needs time to figure out how to crack this nut. It is even less surprising when he's, this meeting comes to nothing. No good. Next day, several skirmishes erupt between patrols on the plain, separating your camp from the Macedonians. The fighting is spread quickly, and your unit is sent out to help it reduce the pressure. Philip has sent reinforcements, too. The first thing you notice are the 20-feet-tall pikes held high by the rear ranks, the phalanx. The phalanx is approaching. You have seen many things in the last 12 years. None of them as scary as five layers of spears pointing advance, uh, points advancing towards you like an impregnable, impregnable death-dealing wall. When the other side is at the right distance, you prepare to hurl your first javelin. Specific target. We can do this. Take it, aim. Take it, aim. No. We're bad. As the side gets closer and closer, you steal yourself for the incoming fight. All right, here we go. We have to fight. We're fighting just... Is it just one guy, or is it just... Ooh, look at that. We got a lot of hit points. Very slow. 
Look at that reach. Okay. Uh, throw that javelin. There we go. Take that. Think your uh, think about your options. Outrageously skilled fighter might attempt to cut his way through the spear wall and engage the enemy at close quarters. Your mortals had better focus on survival, holding the line and trying not to get their morale crushed by this dreadful opponent. One thing is for sure, when the spear wall pushes as one, it won't be easy to defend against. Okay. Um, oh, this is all different stuff. Um, our best chances are just slashing, so I guess we can just slash. Chance to hit opponent. There's, uh, we'll, we'll lose a lot of stance if we fail. Um, rest we can just hang out, of course. Decoy. No consequences. It just hurts their stance. Um, shield push. Uh, if it's resisted, whatever. Um, chop is just us hacking at him. Um, let's just do decoy. No. They're trying to push us, but they're failing. Failing. There we go. We got him a little off balance. Tiny bit off balance. Um... We don't care about respite. Let's, let's just try slash. Nope. Ouch. Let's recover. There we go. And decoy. We're supposed to fight a phalanx here. I guess we just decoy again. Try to get them off balance if we can. Ain't gonna happen. There we go. I guess we want to, like the game said, maybe play it smart here and not go crazy. Trying to get them, you know, killing things that ain't necessarily what we need to do. We need to just hold, just hold the line. Yeah, so just keep on recovering though. Failing to recover. Come on, just recover. There we go. Okay. Um, let's try a shield push. Sure. No. Okay, we'll face him much longer. That's fine. That's fine. Certainly, he's very good at getting us off balance. Okay, we rotate. From your position, it's difficult to figure out what's going on. One after another, if rows behind you fall. We have a phalanx in here. Let's uh, just keep him in a decoy thing. There we go. It's not really doing anything, though. A little bit there, I guess. Stop getting me off balance. Stop it. There we go. Let's go ahead and finish up our recover. And, um... I don't think there's any really benefit in that. That slash. Look, it's, it's a lot worse for us than it is for them, it seems like. We'll just keep on doing things like respite. And just catch our breath. Maybe they'll, they'll tire out um, before we do. On just just recovering and uh, catching our breath. They're almost down to tired. Enemy is tenaciously holding its ground, despite my efforts. What efforts? We've just been hanging out. <laughs> Luckily for you, some enemy units on the, on the flanks are giving way. The phalanx is forced to retreat and avoid being exposed. It takes a while to regroup your lives, uh, your lines after the onslaught. As soon as you are ready, you start giving chase. The pursuit takes you closer and closer to the enemy camp. The ground is getting unfavorable. Such a slope. Is going to make it very difficult for you to fight. In an instant, the noise and the cries of your companions alert you with more horrifying danger. Macedonians have put up a siege weapons to reinforce their position. They are shooting at you with their ballista. Something smashes your shield and knocks you off your feet. In the shock of the moment, your first clear thought is that your arm is still attached. It must have been a glancing blow or you'd be dead already. Enemies are approaching from above. You feel vulnerable without a shield. Uh, I can't stay here in suicide. Move to the rear line. Nobody's going to blame me for that. So be around fight, even without a shield. Ooh. No one's going to blame me. I'll go to the back. Observe from the rear and shout encouragements. Every time your fellow legionaries gain a little ground, difficult terrain, and the de uh, defenses of the 
opposing side unravel their progress. Sunset comes, the skirmish dies out. I really want to fight, but I don't want to die. On the way back, you grab hold of an abandoned shield and replace the one you lost. Last skirmish proved that you can't defeat Philip with a frontal attack. Not as long as he is holding an advantageous position. One night, your maniple uh, and many others are silently gathered in the intervallum between the ramparts and the tents. It is uh, a little army, perhaps as big as a legion. A tribune is in charge. There is a bound ban, uh, man next to him. You march under the moonlight, moving away from the enemy, at least initially. Eventually, you take a path through the mountains. Before dawn, you encamp and eat and rest, only to resume your journey at night. They say the bound man is a local shepherd who promised to lead you behind the Macedonian camp. He is bound to make sure he stays true to his word, but he has been promised a rich payment for his help. The third night, you are told to be doubly, uh, doubly vigilant. You must be very close to your destination. One of the illusionaries immediately gives you the alarm and points to the rise off the path. He's right. You see helmets glinting in the moonlight as two figures try to make their escape. Enemy lookouts. Uh, we'll chase. Even with the help of the moonlight, the hunt is very demanding and the lookouts have had a good head start. But you never lose sight of them. Only Terentius is keeping up with you. When the two fugitives uh, realize you are getting too close, they turn around and fight a desperate battle. Here we go. Desperate battle. Okay. Ooh, that looks like it hurt. Glad it wasn't me. Okay. Um, how you feeling? Oh, they're pretty. They're decent. Their weapons aren't very that that good, uh, but they are pretty quick. Morale's pretty good as well. How about you? How you feeling? Um, morale's good. You're actually not quite as good. So I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight you. Um, you're already off balance. So he's got armor. We could attack the legs. We can triscrab shot. Just um, soft spot hit. There we go. Oh, they absorbed all of it. That wasn't a very good soft spot. Um, let's go for the legs. Nope. Keep on attacking my friend. Uh, he's still a little bit off balance. I think, I think we go for, we go for the the the, uh, the leg, I think. There we go. Um, and then soft spot. We can try soft spot head again. Hmm. Need to recover. There we go. All better. Really need to get a, sh a shot on that guy, though. Nah. Um, I'm still gonna attack him, though. Let's go for his groin. What, does that cover his groin? You think? We'll find out. If I cover it, what's it say? It doesn't say anything. What's it say? Um, no, I can't. Um. Armor. The cuirass, I think, I think covers his groin a bit. Um, we're still going for it though. Soft spot on the groin. There we go. There we go. Let's try that groin again. Okay. Yeah, we gotta go for the soft spot because that one, the armor absorbed it. Ooh, watch out, buddy! You're gonna die. Okay. Um. If I... Let me soft spot. Mm. Okay. Um, we'll stick with the groin. That seems to work. I'm getting tired over here. Not as tired as they are, though. Okay, back with the groin again. Nope. I really want to get this guy. Soft spot torso. Mm, we got eight on him. I think I think we might be able to take him down if we get a good shot on him. Recover failed still. Okay, soft spot. Um, torso. Oh, we got him. We got him. Last turn too. Following uh, vanquish, you take supplies. Oh, hey, look at that. We got stuff. Uh, yeah, give me all of it. Um, that's not very good though. That's that's worse than mine. This though. Might be good. What do we have? Um, better head coverage. Better neck coverage. Same as this. Yeah, yeah, we want this. More penalty to our awareness. I don't care if I'm aware or not, though. I'll take it. So I want this. And then this thing is a level zero cuirass. But we've got... Uh, our chainmail, I think, is pretty good, though. Yeah, our chainmail is really good. So uh, that's all we want. 
Before your comrades catch up, the scouts are quickly surrounded and killed. Other legionaries are arriving in twos and threes, but this battle is already over. You rejoin the bulk of your forces and resume your march. Arrive at your destination before dawn. You are told that the enemy is below the other side of the height uh, you are holding right now. You can take some time to rest, but soon in the morning, the tribune signals your position to the consul with a column of smoke. After this, you are told to wait and be at the ready. It's hard to say how long you've been waiting. In moments like these times, uh, this like these time, always seem to slow down. Now you can clearly hear the noise of battle coming from the other side. At last, the order to advance is given. When you peer above the enemy camp, you can feel their panic even from this far. Some of them attempt to oppose your advance, but they are routed with ease. The rest of the Macedonian army are is fighting against your troops that remained with Flaminius. Your sight of you approach you approaching them from behind is too much for them. They give up the battle and flee. Were it not for the rugged ground that hampered your cavalry, Philip would have lost most of his army today. As it is, many of the Macedonians managed to escape, including their king. He could have won the war this very day. Pause and note there, uh, they have left behind some of their possessions in their hasty flight. Okay. Um, I think we probably have to call it a day. I'm at 36 minutes already. So let's call it here. And then I, I have a feeling we're very near the end. Um, if it's if we're super close to the end, then I'll just, you know, edit these videos and put them together. But I'm going to record one more video and see if we can uh, maybe finish it there. Anyway, thanks again for watching. And I will see you next time.